Oh, hiya, honeys. Welcome back to my spooky little corner. For those that don't know me, I am Lady Mylita, and I bid you welcome to Monster Mondays. It's just another Monster Monday. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So, you may be asking yourself, what are these Monster Mondays you speak of? Well, let me tell you my idea. I kind of wanted to do a weekly segment about something that I'm quite passionate about, and that is horror, monsters, what have you. So, on every Monday, I'm going to come to you with a tale of macabre creatures, whether from movie or from books, or from famous folkloric tales. Okay, my lovely. Seeing as this is like my first Monster Monday back from like a very long hiatus, at least it's got to be five months, um, I wanted to do a special shout out. And this is a very special episode of Monster Monday. Um, this one goes out to my girl Lilith. Um, I just cannot believe what a great friendship you and I have started to develop over just these YouTube videos. And uh, while I was off, this lovely lady messaged me numerous times to check on me to make sure I was okay and that everything was good. And it really touched my heart. And I wanted to thank you so, so much. So this Monster Monday is dedicated to you, Lilith. Um, when I was asking for ideas for Monster Mondays, that there were some creatures you wanted to see or what have you, Lilith was really the only one who made a suggestion. So we're going to do her suggestion today. We're going to talk about Kelpies. So for those of you who don't know about uh, the Kelpie, it is a water spirit that is located in Scotland. So it makes complete sense why Lilith suggested this monster because she is actually from Scotland. So from what I've read, um, almost every body of water or lock in Scotland has uh, a Kelpie associated to it. So for those who don't know, Kelpies are water spirits. And uh, they are shapeshifters as well. They like to entrap humans and uh, drown them, in fact. And usually, uh, from what I've been reading, quite violently as well, which is interesting enough. But everything I read about the Kelpie, right, most their favorite, like, uh, favorite formation, their favorite usually is a horse and they're said it's like a, usually a quite a large horse um and very uh big and it's almost always said to be black which is quite interesting um you know with the whole idea of black being associated with something evil so apparently it's a black horse there are other uh tales um of white horses being seen as well um and there's also tales of the kelpies transforming into like a beautiful young woman a beautiful young man um an old man that's been said too um and like i said horses but like the kelpie is known for being a horse and i will uh post a picture of one that I found like there's so many different like artistic renditionings of what a Kelpie should look like but they always say um the Kelpies uh they look water long right like uh, they'll have like seaweed in their hair or what have you and they always find people by the rivers some accounts state that when the Kelpie transforms into like a uh, human like persona that apparently they keep their hooves and that kind of also inclined them more with Satan or the Christian ideal of Satan. Um, so I think that's why it also they got pretty bad uh, rap so to speak. Not that killing people isn't bad enough but once Christianity came to Scotland it did give it another air of evil, another air of like untrustworthy as well 
So the origins of the word Kelpie is kind of uncertain, but it may be delivered from the Gaelic Kappa. And Lilith, if you're listening, I hope you're going to help correct my wording here because I'm sure I'm a mess up, hon. I'm a mess up. Um, or Kelpich, um, meaning heifer or quilt. Uh, the first recorded use of the term to describe the mythological creature, then spelled Kalpi, so K-A-L-P-I-E, instead of K-E-L-P-I-E, uh, appeared in a manuscript called Ode by William Collins, Composed sometime before 1759 and reproduced in the Transactions of Royal Society of Edinburgh in 1788. The place named Kelpie, Hola, H H O A L L, Hola, and Kelpie Hool, H O O L are reported in a dictionary of older Scottish tongue, appearing in 1674 borough records. So we're not exactly sure what it means, but it, you know, Colt would make sense, right? With the Kelpie always kind of uh, looking like a horse. So that would kind of make sense, wouldn't it? Another common um, characteristic of a Kelpie, if you're, you know, walking around on a Scottish lock and you see uh, a horse and you're wondering, is it a Kelpie? The one thing that they say is that their hooves are backwards. So that is one way to tell if you are encountering a Kelpie. There is a uh, one story um, that is quite common and I did find it on a lot of different sites on the internet. Uh, and the story is about a group of children that were playing along the water's edge at Loch Ness. Now you're thinking, okay, Loch Ness, which one is it, right? Because we got Nessie, but no, no, this is a Kelpie. So as the story goes, there is a group of children playing along the edge of the water. And the water began, as the water began to ripple and foam, they uh, glanced over and saw this beautiful black horse. And it trotted over to them through the water, came right over to them, very friendly horse, right? Excited to see such a beautiful like horse, the children just gathered around it, right? Like, wow, look at this beautiful horse. You know, they want to play with it. Um, they, uh, the children were, you know, petting it, stroking it, and, you know, and they, like, they circled all around the horse, right? And some children were brave enough that they're like, nope, I'm just going to jump on the, I'm going to jump on this horse. And he's so calm. And so the kids are just all gathered around. They're uh, playing with him. However, there was one kid that remained on the ground kind of next to the horse while all the other ones are climbing up on this horse. Uh, and he looked up and to reach the, reach the horse's neck, right, to pet it. And as he went to go and like pet the horse's neck, his hand stuck to the horse. Becoming terrified, like the boy was struggling to get his hand off. And he used all his strength to try and, like, remove his hand from the horse. But he realized his hand was completely stuck on the horse. So the horse starts moving. All the children are stuck on this horse. And this one boy's hand stuck on the neck. The rest of them are all on it. And the horse starts moving down to the water. So the little boy on the ground, who uh, didn't climb on the kelpie... <gasps> Uh, decided, you know what, I'm going to cut off my hand. Now, some stories say it was just a finger and it was on the face. Um, some say it was a hand and it was on the neck. But either way, I, either uh, story that you read, um, the boy cuts off the appendage that is stuck to the horse. So he cuts off, in this one I'm reading, he cuts off his hand. In doing that, though, 
the horse like ran into the water, taking all the other children on his back with him. But the other boy, you know, because he cut off his hand, he escaped. He ran home. Like, he ran home to seek help, right? Like, the Kelpies got my friends. But, you know, the townsfolks went and there was no sign, no nothing. Uh, apparently, the little boy continued to go by the water's edge, hoping to find his friends for days afterwards. But the children were never seen again. And there was another um, written one of the same kind of idea, but... Um, they went to go and find the children and they found like the children's entrails all throughout the lock. So either way, um, you know, one folklore of Kelpies is that when they're drowning, these people, they eat them. So it does make sense that there would be entrails left in the lock. And so, you know, they knew they had a Kelpie, right? So that was a very common tale I did find of the Kelpies. But there is a lot of rich tales of Kelpies online, and that's just kind of what I'm doing here. I'm just, I look online and try and find different sources. Now, you know, they may be wrong or what have you, but really this is just for entertainment purposes. I'm sure you all know that. So, um, you know, don't come after me. I'm just having fun playing with makeup and uh, sharing some fun tidbits with you while I do so. So there is another folktale from Bera, I believe is how it is pronounced. And again, Lilith, I'm coming on you, girl. <laughs> and it tells of a lonely Kelpie that uh, transforms itself into a handsome young man to woo a pretty girl it determined to take as his wife which I find interesting. Like most tales of Kelpies, uh, either they're very wild and they, uh, they almost, you know, they just take them in their horse form and kill them. And then there are these ones where they talk about it and the Kelpies seem almost, I want to say smarter. And this is one that I kind of thought, well, it, it shows it's more intelligent than just like a horse. But the girl recognized the young man as a Kelpie and removed his silver necklace, which was his bridal, um, while he slept. So, and because she did that, he automatically reverted to his Kelpie form, which was a horse, right? And then the bracelet turned into a bridal. And so because he's reverted back to being like a horse, the girl takes the Kelpie to her father's farm where uh, she puts it to work for a year. I'm, I'm, she doesn't, this one doesn't really go into detail of how she put the Kelpie to work, but I'm assuming, you know, back in those days, probably uh, plowing fields and moving stones. Um, but yeah, she put the Kelpie to work. And after a year's time, uh, she took the Kelpie, she rode the Kelpie over to a wise man who tells her um, to return the necklace or the bridle back to the Kelpie to turn him back into the handsome young man. So once the Kelpie had transformed, uh, it was given the choice either to be a Kelpie or a mortal man. The Kelpie in turn turns to the young woman and says, you know, hey, if I was a man, would you marry me? Would you be with me? And uh, the girl goes, why, well, yes, I would. So um, he agrees and uh, the Kelpie chooses to be a mortal man and they get married and live happily ever after. This one, like, <laughs> made me kind of chuckle because he sees her, wants her. She finds out, like, it doesn't say how long they were together, but I'm assuming not very long. And, like, discovers he's a Kelpie. Transforms him into his Kelpie. Like, uses him basically as a slave to do her bidding around this farm. And then transforms him back, says... You know, what do you want to be, a man or a Kelpie? 
Oh, I'll be a man if you marry me. Really? I don't know. I think I'd be a little more angry myself, right? Is that just me? I'm thinking I'd be pretty, I'd be pretty PO'd, I think. I think I would be, yeah. There is even some uh, tales within um, the wonderful land of the internet about how to uh, capture and uh, kill a Kelpie, which I thought was kind of surprising, but I guess that makes sense. If there's some in every, like, lock and river in Scotland, somebody had to, like, kill one, didn't they? Right? It only makes sense. So, one tale says that if a Kelpie is encountered in its equine form without any tax, so that's like bridle, saddle, what have you, um, it can be captured using a halter stamped with the sign of a cross. And this is, again, it kind of comes into the whole play of when Christianity came in and Kelpies were, you know, associated with the devil because of the hooves, right? Um... And its strength could be then harnessed to task, um, harnessed in tasks such as transportation of heavy millstones. So, you know, that shows like if you find like one of these wilder Kelpies that you can like capture it and be like, you're staying with me forever. I found that kind of interesting, the whole concept of that, the whole idea of um, capturing a Kelpie and kind of keeping it as almost a slave, right? Um, there is a tale about that too. Um, a man who captured a Kelpie for his own, for his own uh, prosperity, so to speak. Very minimalistic eyeshadow look today. Wait, you guys will see why. Didn't want anything too cray cray. Not too cray cray today, because the Kelpie is cray cray enough, right? <laughs> Um, okay, so there is a, a folktale describing of how a Laird of Morphe. <laughs> Wonder if he made Morphe cosmetics. I digress. <laughs> he captured a Kelpie and used it to carry stones uh, to build his castle. That would have probably taken a lot of work back in those days, too. So once the work was complete, the Laird released uh, the Kelpie, uh, which was evidently, obviously, unhappy uh, about his treatment. Again, we're not surprised, right? Like, you basically made a Kelpie your slave, and they're water spirits that are malicious, so why would you do that? Again, I digress. Um, and it cursed an issue before it left. Basically, um, sore backs and sore bones. Driving the Lord of Morphe stones. The Lord of Morphe will never thrive as long as the Kelpie is alive. Um, and it was popularly believed to have resulted in the extinction of like the whole Lard's family. Lord, Laird's, Laird's family. So some Kelpies were said to be equipped with bridles and some a saddle appearing invitingly ready to ride. But if mounted, they would run off and drown their riders and eat them. <laughs> um, if the Kelpie was already wearing a bridle, exorcism, again, we're hitting that Christianity thing, might be achieved to remove it. A bridal taken from a Kelpie was endowed with magical properties, and if brandished towards someone, was able to transform that person into a horse or a pony. Can you imagine that kind of power? Be like, I don't like you. And boom, you're a horse. It's just like, a, it's a real interesting uh, concept. I don't know, like to find, you know, Maybe that's just me. I was like the whole idea of, um, you know, the Kelpie transforming people into uh, horses, right? Or ponies of that. Ponies. It is also uh, said that like uh, werewolf legends, Kelpie can be uh, killed with a silver bullet. 
And then it consists nothing more than turf and soft mass jellyfish. Like jellyfish. So it turns into like, I guess, like that blob gelatinous kind of material that you see the jellyfish when they're um, washed up on shore. That sounds kind of gross, right? Uh, when a blacksmith's family were being frightened by the repeat appearance of a water kelpie at their summer cottage, the blacksmith managed to render it into a heap of starch or something like it. Uh, by penetrating the spirit's flank with two sharp iron spears that been that had been heated in fire. That poor Kelpie, that would have really hurt, no? That would have been painful. It's like, I wonder how it was upsetting the blacksmith family. Like... How bad really was it that it warranted that? Honestly, Darkling, you would think I'd be better at one liner by now. I swear I mess it up every time. But you know what? As I've said countless times on this channel, you know, makeup should be fun. It's not perfect. And when you see all the perfection, guess what, loves? It's a filter. So don't forget that, okay? Don't forget it trying new eyeliner uh mediums lately so uh this is like a cream liner so i thought mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we'll try it out <laughs> actually found there's a lot of tales of uh the kelpie around uh loch ness of course like but you would think like loch ness you think of nessie right you think of the loch ness monster in particular but apparently it was a breeding ground for a lot of Kelpie sightings as well. Ooh, I really like that. Okay. So there is uh, one tale that um, in early 19th century, um, a Kelpie had haunted the woods and shores of like the Loch Ness and it was tacked up in a bridle and a saddle. This story, there is um, a Highlander. Ooh, there can be only one. Okay. <laughs> Um, uh, and his name was James McGregor. And, uh, in this tale, he, uh, takes the Kelpie by surprise by, uh, cutting off its bridle. Like, oh, and like a lot of Kelpie power is in the bridle. So that would, uh, not be a good thing. Yeah, it even says it's uh, the source, like it's a, the bridle is basically its source of power, it says in the tale. And uh, if it does not get it back within 24 hours of removal uh, in this tale, the Kelpie dies. It's pretty intense. So this Kelpie in particular had the the power of speech and there are other tales where um, the Kelpie will speak to people. So Kelpie's talking to him trying to get his bridle back right and uh, McGregor's like nope McGregor Gregor G-R-I not Gregor Greg. Um, tried to get his um, his bridle back because the Kelpie's gonna die without it right like come on. I think any of us in that type of situation would probably try and get our bridle back. But McGregor's like, nope, you're not getting it back. You're a nasty little Kelpie and you're not getting it. Uh-uh, I said no. So the Kelpie follows McGregor all the way back to his home. Like, give me my bridle now. Give me my bridle now. Give me my bridle now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when he gets to the home, the Kelpie's like, oh, look, there's a sign of the cross on top of your door. There's no way my bridle's going to go through there. It's just not going to go because of the power. Because, yeah, Christ compels the Kelpie, apparently, um, in these stories. And, uh, again, Christianity. 
So, says, no, nope, you're not going to get through that door because that's so McGregor, McGregor, being a pretty smart little Highlander boy, he just threw, tosses it in the window, just tosses it through an open window. <laughs> Poor Kelpie. <laughs> in the end, the Kelpie accepts his fate and roams off into the wilderness knowing he's got 24 hours, well, less than 24 hours now to live and McGregor's not going to give him his, his uh, bridal back. So he's, he's, uh, he's SOL. The tale does continue on with the Kelpie's bridal, though. And the bridal is passed down through the generations of family. Referred to as Willock's Ball and Bridal, it had the magical powers of healing. And then, like, a spell would be created, and they would put it in water, and they would chant, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the water could be used as a cure. That's kind of cool. It's an interesting concept that, um, especially with the whole Christianity aspect of this, um, that they would use a magical artifact from a water spirit or, or what they were considered more demon-like to create cures. I find that quite fascinating. I really do. In most tales of the Kelpie, when they do transform um, into human form, it's always that of like a young man or an old man. There is one tale of um, an old man on a bridge sewing his trousers and they uh, realize that he's not an old man. He's actually a Kelpie and they hit him over the head and he transforms back into his equine self and runs off. <laughs> imagine you're a kelpie bam <laughs> but there has been stories of um the kelpie transforming into woman although they are few and uh far in between um there was one uh at conon house um in ross and camaraderie i don't know I think it's a book. Uh, and it tells of a tall woman dressed in green with withered, meager countenance, ever distorted by a magnetic scowl, who overpowered and drowned a man and a boy after she jumped out of a stream. So, I don't know. She doesn't sound like a, a happy looking lady. Um, could she possibly have been just like uh, a bog witch or something like that? And uh, this boy and gentleman were in her bog and she just did not like that. Because, I don't know, it strikes me more as like witch story than per se Kelpie. Um, but still pretty interesting. Like there, again, as I've said, there's so many tales about Kelpies out there. You know, you just type them in the Google and you will find uh, lots of different information about Kelpies. They also are in like a lot of art I've noticed and which is kind of cool too. Um, I love uh, old paintings and what have you of like uh, different um, mythological kind of creatures especially olden paintings and stuff like that. I love uh, different ones of you know especially greek literature i love them but anyway so there is lots out there of um kelpies and there's one in particular it's a big statue one um i'm going to post a picture of it for you to see because it's pretty interesting i find um so it's called the kelpies and it's a 30 meter high uh horse head sculpture there's two of them right one's kind of like that um it's depicting the shape, uh, kelpies the shape-shifting water spirits in their equine form um and it is located between falkirk and grange mouth and it's standing next to a new extension of the fourth and clyde canal near the riven carnan lilith correct me please if i'm wrong um, and so the sculpture was designed by Andy Scott and it was completed in October, 2013. So it is a fairly 
a new sculpture which I think is kind of cool because um, it is in Scotland, right? Like Scottish people, you know, loving their heritage, loving their folklore, like creatures. I, I just think it's phenomenal. And uh, I would totally one day love to come down to Scotland as uh, my descent is Scottish as well. Scottish and Irish, but... Uh, Mama my lead is all Scottish, so I find uh, I'm definitely more closer with Mama my Lita than, um, um, well, I just call him Sprunger. Anyways, I digress. So, yes, the cow peas. I was also trying to find a write up on it, but I cannot find it. I was listening to a podcast. Um, called The Cryptic Sisters. Uh, if you're on Spotify, they are fantastic and they uh, mainly handle uh, all cryptics or folklore monsters or what have you. So they have one on the Kelpie and they were talking about the white Kelpie and there was also a tale of a white Kelpie with, um, with snakes on its... Uh, Maine and what have you and I tried to find that story but I could not find it but they were talking about it and I found it quite interesting the idea of like almost like a Medusa like horse but again sadly I couldn't find that tale in my search and that my darklings is some tales of the Kelpie um like I said so many more out there just you know look her up um but yes it's a real rich folkloric tale um that stands like the test of time really you know with like new monuments being posted of them it's a very uh, rich part of uh, scottish folklore and uh i want to thank uh my dear girl lilith for uh suggesting the kelpie and i hope i did it justice for you my darling um also, any of you lovelies out there, if there is like a monster you want to see, uh, you know, a folklore creature, you want me to talk about um, like a book, a movie, but keep it monster themed or, you know, at least creepy like, uh, I'd be glad to do that. Um, I do these for myself, but I also do it for you. And I want to make sure you are all very entertained. Thank you for joining me today. Goodbye, my darling.